All right, guys, I'm gonna to try to prevent this video from being just a breakdown of Moras, but invariably, a lot of Moras are very similar in size, thickness, and overall like qualities. Um, so there's gonna be quite a few Moras here, but today we're gonna to be talking about the one high value, high quality budget bushcrafting blade that I can't get over. And this is none other than the Mora Robust. Now the Mora Robust over the course of years or the years has seen a few facelifts and this is its most modern version. Uh, of course, it kind of looks a lot like a Mora 511 just from a quick side angle. Of course, there are some differences. The Mora Robust has a much, much thicker blade than its companion, the 511. So it also is a wider blade. So there are a few little differences. Of course, the color of the handle too. The Robust has always had a gray handle and for the most part I believe the 511 has always had either a kind of like weird off red or a green like this which I actually kind of dig this olive drab. It's kind of cool but uh, yeah so the more Robust is a really cool knife that honestly I kicked myself in the butt for not picking up much earlier on in life and it's just a really cool blade. In fact, the more robust was such a popular knife that it spawned the companion, which for the companion reference, we have a clipper, which is very similar, but the clipper HD. Now, personally, in my opinion, the Clipper HD is a little bit of, I don't want to say a, a ripoff. Uh, I just think that unfortunately, like the clipper or sorry, Clipper, the Companion HD is essentially this knife just with the same thickness as this blade. But both of these knives, the Clipper is like an $11 knife and the Robust is like a $15 knife and the Companion HD is like a $25 knife. So I think it's a little bit like marked up because it's a special edition, but I, I still recommend typically getting the Robust just because for the $10 price difference, this is your blade difference. And so the I think a lot of people get caught up in like, oh, you know, the clipper slash companion has a longer blade. So the same thickness with a longer blade equates to bigger costs. However, realistically, you guys can see that, yes, there is a blade difference here, but it's only about, <clears throat> if anything, a quarter inch. So realistically speaking, that's not actually going to bring a lot of like realistic usability to the knife. You're not going to be able to, you know, baton down a tree with a companion HD and not baton down a tree with a robust. So in my opinion, I still think the robust is the better buy. And uh, yeah, so I think it's more affordable or it's definitely more affordable. And I think it's probably the better one to get. Now, as far as it goes, um, I feel a little bit mixed about the robust just because personally speaking, I think a lot of people gravitate towards the robust because it's thicker. Obviously, as the name applies, it is more physical physically robust. But to be fair, the uh, the original, like, I think it's like 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 um, thickness of the normal companion clipper 511 has never really proven me to like be unreliable. I've not broken any of them in hard use or in, you know, batoning. And once again, unless you're like batoning a piece of rebar, you're probably not going to break one of these just because the simple fact of the matter is these things are only about three and a half inches long in blade length so that means you can realistically only baton about something at most like at most three inches in diameter roughly speaking so you're not going to be like batoning huge pieces of wood with the, these knives they're just not really um, that large so in my opinion i've always kind of gone back and forth with the robust and that's why i never really bought one but to be fair i will say the extra thickness is pretty nice and the biggest thing i like about it is that as you'll notice especially very noticeable with the companion slash clipper styled knives is that when you step up to that bigger thickness more does actually grind this um, Scandi grind a lot uh, deeper. So you guys can notice how shallow or how small a Scandi grind is on the uh, clipper here. And for me, I actually really like the higher approach angle and the longer grind on the Robust. Now, part of that is due to the nature that, of course, when you have a thicker blade to compensate and still deliver that same cutting um, geometry, you do have to step, at least with Scandi grinds, you do have to step that grind back and you know like push it back a little bit further so it kind of works itself out because the thicker blade equates to a longer grind but it also necessitates that because it is a thicker blade now um, it has about the same if not a slightly longer scandy grind than something like the garberg which is actually something that i'm kind of surprised but do really like and uh, of course the <clears throat> these two are about the same thickness 
Now, to be fair, it is slightly deceptive when you look at the Robust and see like its thickness because it has the large black unfinished, you know, kind of nest to it, but it is truly the same thickness. These are both an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, the only difference, of course, is that the uh, Garberg here has a sharpened spine out of factory for striking ferro rods or scraping bark or whatever you do with it. Um, whereas the Robust does not. And once again, that's also partly because the Robust is designed to be a value option. Now, as far as it goes when looking at something like a Garberg or Robust, what do I think of these guys? Of course, these are pretty different, not only in price point. Um, now, these two are both carbon, so they're both made of the same steel, the C100, which is essentially 1095. Big difference is with the Robust, you're of course getting that nice DLC coating. You're also getting a longer blade, um, much longer blade on this guy, and you're getting a longer handle. But one thing I will say that I think the Robust actually wins in, though I will give the overall victory to the Robust just for its size and its overall um, homogeneity or homogeneity for its um, handle. So you can hold it in a reverse grip, you know, do chest levers, and you can also hold it in a normal grip. But one thing I do like about the Robust is its rubberized handle. This is something that is kind of once again deceptive because you look at the 511 and you look at the um, Robust and they have essentially the same handle. The only difference is this is a hard plastic as you guys can see here, whereas this is a um, rubberized finish. So they look very similar, but the Robust actually has a ton of traction when you hold it because this whole outer black portion here is rubberized. And this is something that, as I've mentioned in videos about the um, Garberg, I really do wish that the Garberg would have had a at least partially rubberized handle, something along or to the effect of the Morakan's bull, because the Morakan's bull, I think, like, this is the thing that always blew my mind is that on your Eldris, on your Khan's bull, they have the rubberized, you know, outer portion, very similar to a robust, but it's the same type of handle, like, it's the same exact handle, uh, style and like size and stuff as a Mora Garberg. So I'm like, it's so frustrating that they, um, just left this as a hard plastic. And I think partially, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I think partially they made it hard plastic to make it seem more quality because a lot of the cheaper um, or more budget offerings from Mora, like the Robust, the Companion, the Clipper, the Gunspool, the Eldris, all have rubberized handles. So I think it's kind of unfortunate in that regard. Um, but I really do wish they would have rubberized this. So anyways, that's just kind of my two cents on that, but this is not a, Gar a Garberg video. This is a robust video. So anyways, the robust is a really cool knife. And I think that this is one of the few knives that I would genuinely say is a sub 30, sub $20, cause you can get these for $15. That's what I paid for mine. It, and it can be a genuine endpoint. Now is this, necessarily the perfect end all to beat all type of bushcrafting knife not necessarily but i would say if you were going to make this an end goal or end point knife just the knife that you're going to make your bushcrafting knife for the rest of your time in the world um, i'd say definitely square off the spine um, that can be very easy to be that can be very easily done with a dremel with a sanding bit and just sand that off you know make it nice and sharp and then you're basically good to go with this uh, more robust and then the other thing i would say is um <clears throat> you know invest in quality things like hatchets saws uh things like silky uh, gomboys uh, you know i get a lot of I got a, I get a lot of retaliation from recommending uh, Gransfer's Brooks, but Holtefer's is also good. Um, Holtzbruch, of course, I have their axes as well. But, you know, one of those more forced style axes that is designed to carve as well as cut down trees, I think is a very solid option. Even things like the Husqvarna's, I have one as well. And uh, they're just essentially a Holtz. Holtefors, Holtefors uh, axe, just rebranded for uh, Husqvarna. So kind of the same thing, but um, those types of axes will perform very well. And I think, you know, having a good saw, like a Baco Laplander or a Silky Gomboy, or even a Silky Big Boy would be a solid choice. And then on top of that, you know, pairing it up with something like a hatchet or an axe, 
is really going to be the way to make the most out of something like a robust. But as far as it goes, like this thing is going to deliver as much quality as a Topps Fieldcraft. This thing is essentially going to deliver a lot of the same performance, albeit this is a little bit of a smaller blade, but it's going to, once again, perform very similarly. About the only thing I really dislike about the more uh, robust and this really goes for their whole pro line and they make a whole bunch of different like the 510 the 511 which is this guy the robust and a handful of others um, is that they have very deep finger choils here and this is done because these are designed to actually be professional trade knives so not like professional as in high-end or bougie but like trade knives for people in different trades like electricians um, carpenters stuff like that like that's what these are actually designed for and so so in those types of job applications, you want a knife that is safe, that's not going to get people cut. So that's the reason why like your clipper has a very shallow finger guard, why your cons bull literally has no finger guard, uh, is these are designed for more field use. And so they're not really concerned as much about like litigation and liability, whereas these are. So they have very prominent finger choils and Long story short, essentially what happens is when you put this in a reverse grip, like a chest lever to pull back on, as you pull back, you are going to build pressure um, in the web of your palm here, and it is going to feel, and of course this isn't gonna be like at first, the first you know cut back you make, it's gonna feel uncomfortable, but if you're sitting there trying to plane a piece of wood down to make something like a figure four deadfall trap, you will probably notice that fairly quickly. So that's about the only thing I dislike about the Robust, but that's really just more a Pro-Line series uh, issue. Like I said, your 511, your 510, um, your different Pro-Line knives are all going to have that significant or notable finger choil. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I will say the Robust is still a really good pick for me. Um, I, I will say, in my opinion, there's nothing that this can't do over something like the Mora Clipper, but the base thing I like about it is it does have that much longer Scandinavian grind. And of course, the thickness does help if you're gonna do more batoning. Of course, having a thicker knife is gonna act more like a wedge and split pieces of wood apart better. So if you guys want it, it's out there. The Robust is great. I'm glad I finally picked one up, but there's been a lot of reasoning. Like this is essentially the reasoning as to why I didn't previously pick one up is because essentially these knives are great but there's a lot of things that the clipper companion cons bull and 511 can do that this can do as well so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out